We've got a special guest. Uh, we're throwing this up on social, but hopefully we can have her on our show, on our formal show, because she's absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean, she's uh, she belongs on TV, okay? Not yeah. just in a YouTube video, okay? You know what I mean? Why, why are you... You know what? In fact, cast this to your television. Have some respect, will you? Uh, she's absolutely incredible. I remember her from playing with the women's national team. You may know her right now as the Fox Soccer lead analyst, ladies and gentlemen, women's national team star. Ali Wagner, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ali Wagner. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Obviously, we have a lot to uh, discuss uh, about the She Believes Cup. You are calling these matches, uh, doing uh, an incredible job. We we've already seen uh, two matches. The final uh, match again for the U.S. Women's National Team is, is happening uh, against Argentina uh, uh, on Wednesday, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Let's talk about the U.S. Women's National Team and how they've uh, been uh, so far. How they've been performing because they the, the matches definitely from my perspective have been I think a, a bit tougher than uh, uh, you know uh, than I expected. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right about the Canada match. I think that was a performance that surprised everyone. I think they 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 kept it really tight defensively, as you saw Canada did. They were in a four three three offensively, four five one defensively, and they they really uh, you know wanted to win that midfield battle. I think you could say they did, and I think they they really did take away a lot of the creativity that we've seen of free flowing football out of the US team, even though we did create a bunch of chances and, and they probably would argue that they were creative enough to to get a few in the back of the net earlier in that match. But I just think Canada did take away a lot of, um, uh, you know, the strengths of that side. So yeah, that was, a, that was a performance that I think surprised most of us because Canada again was, you know, they didn't have all their top players. So, and they had a new manager. Um, they were challenged in a way, I guess, that that we just didn't anticipate in that first game. And then they also conceded opportunities. And it's so funny. I've been thinking about this because then you flash forward to the Brazil game and in same situation, I think we're expecting that that good battle that we did see. I think the first half was better than the second, uh, you know, but the U.S. conceding chances makes us all go, what's happening? You know, what's happening? They crossed midfield yeah, yeah. line. And, and I was just thinking about it going, gosh, I mean, what a bar we've set, you know, what a bar this team has set for themselves that we actually judge those performances by conceding opportunities as, wow, this is, this is something to be concerned about, you know, and, and you look at almost any other matchup in the world, men's, women's football, that, that's going to occur. You're going to give away chances. We're just not used to seeing it with the U.S. team, you know, especially outside of a world event. We were talking about this on, on our show and when, when we were kind of recapping the games and saying like, a listener could has every right to, to to scream at her back line and say like this is not what I'm here to do. I'm yeah, not here to stop I'm shots. To relax for 90 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean when she goes to the office, it's a training. It's not game time. You know? What do you think this says for Vlaco? Because right now everyone's saying like, oh, I don't know, it's shaky. Why? Because we're not winning by four goals every match on average. <laughs> like, what does that say? Is, is the rest of the world catching up to us? Is this new te is this new tactics maybe that the team isn't familiar with? Or is it just the back line isn't as solid as it used to be? Look, I, I think they don't have to be mutually exclusive. Yeah, the, the, the common theme is always going to be the rest of the world is catching up. And we know that to be true, you know, but I think the other thread is, yeah, they're still, you know, fresh off of a year of pandemic, not being able to train under a new manager. And, you know, he's new. They haven't, he haven't, he has not had them in difficult matches uh, you know, to speak, really. It's been Netherlands, Canada, and now Brazil, I would say, under his tenure. And, and so that's three games. And and there's going to be these learning opportunities that they have. But yeah, they're, they're, are, they're, they're going to be challenged. I think that's what we have to realize. You're playing against Dabinia. In my opinion right now, the, one, the best player in the world, probably. Um, if you're, you could add a Sam Kerr to that. You can add some of our players, of course. But, you know, if we're going non-US centric, of course she's going to break you down. I mean, the best defender will not stop the best attacker. And and so you're going to come up against situations like this. Uh, but I do think that the U.S. still was a little stretched. I do think that they got caught not taking uh, advantage of the tempo of the game or controlling the tempo of the game. And, and yeah, it's stuff that, that the team will have to rectify. They're going to have to correct it because that wasn't even Brazil's strongest lineup. And it, and it wasn't ours, to be fair, either. The other couple of things I wanted to re recap, especially with the Brazil match, I mean, really fun moment, especially Megan Rapino giving a, a, a shout out to little baby Sloan. 
Uh, I, you know what? I got I got to jump in here because uh, you know people were. How'd you guys not know? And it, it, when you're in broadcasting, if you weren't told beforehand, you got to be careful with that stuff because you're just not sure. If if we were to say, yeah, yeah that's likely an homage to Megan Rapino, or to, excuse me, to Allie and Ashlyn and Baby Sloan, and then we're wrong, we look like little <laughs> idiots, right? And they're yeah. like, no, or, actually, they're not even friends. They hate each other. You know? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. would make it about myself, but like clearly they know I'm looking at puppies, so <laughs> that you know she's holding my puppy. Thank you so much, Megan Rapino. <laughs> well, yeah, or oh, it could have been like, wow, the, uh, you know, I, I, Ali Wagner breaks the news: uh, Megan Rapino and Sue Bird having a baby. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why is Megan Rapino heading to San Francisco? <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about this match because we'd expect, you know, obviously two wins. We've got a big one coming up against Argentina. They need to at least draw. What are your thoughts on the game? Do you think this is going to be one of the easier matches of the She Believes Cup? And do you think this is a lock? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I think this is, it should be a lock. This should be an easier match, you know, but I think this could be an opportunity that Vlaco tests out some different players. So I think that's an exciting part, you know, as a fan and as an analyst to see if, if he does bring in some fresh blood. You know, I think for Argentina, this is a group that's just learning or looking to learn from from these, you know, top class environments. And and look, the, the story is always the same with some of these countries that haven't put as much uh, resources and emphasis on the women's side. It's it matters, you know, and, and look at the disparity that that likely, you know, will occur when Argentina steps out there against the U.S. and in funding and resources and, and they're they have talented players. So those players deserve to have, I think the kind of environment that our U S players have. So I hope that when they get out there and they get to experience the environment, you know, people in the Federation at the AFA are looking at it and going, all right, we really need to step it up and take care of these ladies. Yeah. We've always sure. said uh, on the show, like that the U S women's national team, regardless of who they face, they respect them enough to absolutely demolish them to, to make a point. So they don't respect so you, Canada. <laughs> 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 okay, catch. Uh, <laughs> if we learned anything from this tournament, that was it, right? <laughs> <laughs> catch uh, Ali Wagner uh, on the call uh, on FS1 uh, on Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you know, what we're hoping uh, the U.S. Women's National Team uh, take the trophy uh, uh, and win another She Believes Cup. Uh, but it'll, it'll definitely be uh, wildly entertaining. So, Ali Wagner, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for having me, guys. Put me on TV next. Ha, 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 ha.